Hey guys, welcome back to Stuff and Things for your daily dose of nerd news. On today's episode, we're going to take a look at a new sensor that's designed to take in the majesty of the universe. And after that, a replacement for gasoline in the near future? Probably not, but who knows. So first up, even though space is pretty friggin' huge, I mean it's literally the biggest thing there is, and there's lots of wonderful things to look at, lots of wonderful nebulae and everything, sometimes, you know, you just want to look at one single photon and know everything about that photon. Researchers from the University of California, Santa Barbara, have developed a new type of sensor that does just that. It can take in the information from a single photon, uh, figure out its exact position, its exact energy levels, and where it, you know, came from. Obviously in complement with a larger array, so you just get a lot more information. The sensor itself is coming through spectrums that, you know, we don't normally touch, the microwave spectrum to be specific. And these aren't just regular semiconductor sensors, which is apparently a big thing, I guess we're reaching our limit in regards to what semiconductor sensor can do for us. This thing is a superconductor, and the only way to make those work is at ridiculously low temperatures. This thing operates at 0.1 Kelvin, which is just, you know, like a smidgen above nothing moving. Right now the devices are quite small, they're only 2,000 pixels by 2,000 pixels. So they're not pulling in a lot of information, but apparently it's just super useful information. It's stuff we just can't get ordinarily with any sort of current tech. I'm not sure what the applications on this are other than just looking at things in incredibly fine detail. Looking into supernova and being able to take it apart piece by piece, what each photon is really telling us. That's kind of cool. And moving along, we're always looking at new ways to store energy. And it's the reason why we're constantly investing in electric powered cars, or trying to get other sources of power to work. It's why we just use oil right now. It's because it's just a great way of storing vast amounts of energy. Fortunately, it does have its side effects, as we all know. Japanese researchers have come up with a way of storing hydrogen in a molecule of aluminum and copper and making completely stable and safe for transport. And it's safe for everything. It's completely non-toxic to all animal and plant life. Basically, they constructed this molecule of aluminum and copper, and then they hydrogenated it. Under some ridiculous circumstances, it actually required 10 gigapascals of pressure. That's about a million and a half pounds per square inch. And about 800 degrees to actually form this thing. Fortunately, it's not very efficient at its current state, but it is just a proof of concept. It's just a first start and a long maybe long road to actually having a viable new viable fuel source because hey hydrogen is the way to go we can get ways to actually store hydrogen cheaply and efficiently and you know make it actually as cost effective as oil is which might not ever necessarily happen but it's, if it's cost effective enough then you know we can stop relying on other things and stop you know like killing the world and stuff well killing our ability to live on it to be more specific that's me for me today, guys, and actually brings up an interesting point of what you guys think will be the next uh, readable, available source of energy. You know, we had, for the longest time, just manpower, various animals, wood was used for things, and then we got into coal and steam power. We've been kind of running the steam power train for a long time now. Oil has been the, our drug of choice for the last century or so. What's going to be the next big thing? I mean, I'm all for nuclear power every day, but that's just me, and I'm crazy. Let me know in the comments down below what you think. And of course, if you like what you've seen, do not forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons for me to have it to be. And we'll check in the next video.